Basketball breaks. So make sure you check it out. Google Bricks. Basketball breaks. Basketballbreaks.com. Keep it locked. Kind of people. Yeah, oh, man. Bad, man. Yeah. NBA is finally back. Yeah, man. So let's just get it started. No further ado. What are you saying, Julian? You said you had a run sheet. Let's go. Yeah, no, I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk some injuries, um, the rookies, because you can't not get excited about the rookies, and like maybe some pleasant surprises. There's no way we can't talk about Giannis, but like, yeah. maybe get to him a bit later. But I thought first. They can't talk about the Suns and like firing Earl Watson. Um, first coach to go, I think it's like the second fastest or third fastest firing in the league, like for the start of the season. I remember what a few years ago, Mike Brown went out after not very many games, but like Kevin McCall went out after a couple of games where everyone knew that he was that was like, that was choppy waters. But Earl Watson, I thought he had a good rapport with the team i thought he had a good thing with his players being so young like i thought that was his his whole his whole shtick and like it didn't pay off like they lost three games of worst three games like like in terms of losing margin for any team ever um and then they won last night um but yeah what do you guys think is it was that the right move by the suns like to drop watson so early in the season or was it too late should they've done it in the summer i thought there's a lot that that's not known um I feel like, uh, like you said, with the team being so young and him being brought there, particularly as a young coach, and with where they are in their kind of development, rebuild or whatever, with the pieces that they have, um, the balance of veterans and young guys that they have, um, it did seem a bit sudden. <clears throat> it did seem as though if there was some <clears throat> major known underlying problems, it would have made too much sense for them to make that move in the off season, um, I think that starting zero and three, and even if it is the largest margins or whatever, um, I don't know if that really played that much of a role because it's not a surprise where they are within yeah. their development with yeah. their roster. Exactly. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't to, to me anyway. It doesn't seem like that's the reason why. It feels like there's some underlying yeah. stuff that we don't really know about because that just seems way too sudden, way too soon, and. But the record and the margin and whatnot, based on what they know they have, it's kind of like, well, we knew this was highly likely. You know what I mean? So, so see, I get you. Like everyone knew they were going to be bad. No one was expecting them to come out the gate and like contest games against good teams and stuff like they play the Clippers and like they're playing teams that they shouldn't be with the talent <laughs> they have right now. But also watching some of their tape, you can see that no one was excited to be on that court wearing a Suns jersey. The in, the body language, like body language doctor, it was all bad. Like there was some, I don't know who it was. It was against the Knicks, some guy like. No, it was against the Clippers, like Montrose Harrell beat a guy down, he flopped, Harrell took a layup, missed it, grabbed it and put it back while three guys watched him do it. Like, mm -hmm. no, it was just, aside from that one funny clip of them all going into the fast break at the same time, there's been, <laughs> yeah. there's been nothing good coming out of Suns. But yeah, what, what are you saying? Yeah. Bledsoe as well, saying that he yeah, doesn't want to be here. I don't think that was just as a result of the firing of Earl Watson. There's clearly yeah. underlying issues that they've obviously done well to keep away from the media, but they were clearly there. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with what you said, Philip. Because it's to me it sounds nice if you uh, fire a coach after three losses in a season after three games. Either you you're like just dumb and you haven't did it before, but yeah. but that's like there has to be something else because otherwise yeah. it's just very very dumb to do it. Yeah. Well, I think people have like the, the rumor mill says that there's stuff going on in the front office. There's a lot of problems there and. Maybe ownership wants to sell the team, and like, yeah. or they, the ownership wants some wins now so he can sell the team because he doesn't want to sell a team that's shit and like lose a hundred million dollars. Like, like, yeah, okay, a, but, like, ten extra but, wins would break that. But, would... Like, if I had like a couple of millions, uh, hundred billions, like, I yeah. wouldn't pay one hundred million more if it if it's like five, yeah. three, or three uh, of uh, eight, two, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's such a shame because they have got all this great talent and I want to see it work. Um, mm -hmm. And like, I was a big fan of the, the Nash era Suns. Yeah. Um, and even go back to the 90s, like the Barclays Suns, they were fun teams to watch. It sucks to see a, a relatively proud franchise that always seems to have its yeah. shit together go down the toilet the last few years. Right, right back when like, there's stuff in the locker. You can tell there's stuff going on like, behind the scenes. Like Goran Dragic wasn't happy. Isaiah Thomas wasn't happy. 
Yeah. Like, so, like all three of their point guards from four years ago, when everyone was saying, oh, yeah, we're going to change the game with three point guards. All of them left and, well, Bledsoe is leaving. I don't want to ask, like, where do you think Bledsoe is going to end up? Because he's getting traded. Woo! He's going to get traded. I think he might want to be a part of it. Mm. He might want to be a part yeah. of it. New York, New York. <laughs> um, They've got assets. So. Start spreading the news. Yeah. yeah, That's a very probable landing spot for him, yeah. to be fair. Mm. I don't see, you know, the whole Cavs thing is being touted. Yeah. That, yeah, it's because he's got I, the same agent as LeBron. That's it. That's it. Like, yeah, I'm not feeling that. That's not happening. Um, the fit is a madness. Like, okay, nah. Rose is yeah. cool, but he'll be back. Okay, IT is out till February, whatever, but he'll be back. And then yeah. you've got whole Calderon. And then, no, he's not going. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. we know that Isaiah Thomas and Bledsoe can't play together. Like, we've seen I'm it before. Like, yeah. like, why would you try? <laughs> yeah. No, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, I agree that. The Knicks is definitely a good landing spot for him. Yeah. Denver's but then Nuggets, Nuggets have a Nuggets. good package. Just with that, with yeah. that Moody A. Fareed, mm. that's, that's a good package. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I think it will be a possible toss up between those two, Denver and New York. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the other team that like the sentimental one that people throw out is LA, uh, the Clippers. I mean. Like, um, because he played there, that's where he started his career. And, like, I mean, who, who can think about Austin Rivers? Um, I don't know. Austin Rivers has to be in that deal because he's got to get rid of him. But, like, I think they got Clippers got a good thing going with that. Yeah, they got Pat a great Beverly Teodosic situation. And obviously, Eric Bledsoe is not going to be a third string point guard on anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so he can, play, he can play the two there. But yeah, anyway, it seems more likely it's going to end up in New York or Denver. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's essentially sad to see, but they won a game last night, which is good against the Kings, whatever that counts for. But yeah, <laughs> but definitely, I thought we should talk about that first. I Me, mean, I think that Watson, he, he's the fall guy. Like that team sucks, and they needed someone needed to get fired, and they decided the GM is going to get fired at the end of the season. Right, that's it. There's going to be a wholesale change, but yeah, Bledsoe's gone. Um, yeah, I mean the Suns are going to suck. We said this in one of our earlier pods. They're going to suck. They're going to suck hard. Um, and they haven't even been fun to watch because they don't want to play. So yeah. hopefully that changes. Hopefully that changes. Maybe but, Devin Booker makes a, again a game plus yeah. fifty or something. One yeah, one in a loss. Great. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that will be the highlight season. Yeah, nothing more Sorry. to come from the Suns. I think. Talking about some injuries, like the big ones, like season-ending ones, like Hayward and Lynn. Yeah. Um, like, and that's sad. I mean, Lynn. On the Nets wasn't gonna. He was he was playing well. It looked good while he was on the floor with even with D'Angelo Russell, but <laughs> they weren't gonna be a playoff team. So uh, that's real sad. And I hope he gets better. But at the same time, it doesn't exactly change the league. Gordon Hayward going down. Like we talked about this briefly last week, but since on this list of injuries, I mean, I don't want to ever see that tape again. <laughs> Me neither. Right. Yeah. Ugly, ugly. That was horrific. Yeah, I just remember. Watching the game and seeing his leg, like it almost looked like something out of a horror film. Like the way yeah. his leg was in the complete wrong direction. Some shit I saw that. I mean, that's real sad. Like we talked about it a little bit last week. I mean, the other ones that have come through now on the entry list, like there's CP3. Yeah. Um, looks like the Rockets going to be okay, right? They they look like they can hold down the fort perfectly well, right? Yeah, I don't think that's going to be devastating to them. Nah. Uh, what's it weeks max yeah exactly it's early in the season yeah. but hopefully it's not indicative of some like latent injury that's going to crop up again later in the year but True. I watching a little bit of Houston stuff uh, I've been weirdly impressed with it. I, like even last year I was quite bored watching Houston because I knew it was like right you're going to get a three or a layup which is like it's impressive basketball to watch like from a tactical standpoint but it's not actually that interesting um you know who did interest me, who I thought last year really wasn't much and wouldn't be much without James Harden? Clint Capella is actually playing like really well. Even like, I've seen him do one like jab step, one dribble hook shots, like stuff that I didn't think he had in his bag. Yeah. But the thing is, Clint Capella actually wasn't that bad last year. You no. see, and AC, you know about this as well. Mm-hmm. Clint Capella is one of those players that suffers from this thing that literally <laughs> everybody suffers from, where someone mm-hmm. might come into the league. And they're decent, but they might have certain discrepancies. Yeah. Now, they actually change that, and they work on that. But it's like it takes two to three years for most people, particularly so-called media um, experts, <laughs> to catch up. 
So, so for example, and we often mention Blake Griffin, someone might not have yep. a jump shot, but then they develop a jump shot. Yeah. Yeah. And for two or three years, people will still be saying he can't shoot. But no, you're not looking. He has now developed a jump shot. He's regularly banging 18 foot jump shots. And it takes people a long time to catch up. And Clint Capella's fallen victim to that because, all right, he's not the greatest, but last season he actually played quite decent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think the, the other knock to Clint Capella, people say, like, oh, yeah, he's good, but it's only because he plays with James Harden. Like, he's a rim running big that he'd be nothing without, like, a guy throwing the ball above the rim. And, you know, from little bits I've seen, that's just not the case anymore. He seems like, I don't want to say, I mean, that team doesn't win as many games. with. He's better than the replacement. Like, an average replacement, he is above that. And if they lost him, it would be a tangible loss, which is great for him and great for his, whenever his contract's up, that's really great for him. Because, I mean, in this era of run, like running bigs, like he's, he's quintessential, really. I mean, if you could shoot, that'd be amazing, but not everyone can shoot. So... Yeah, I'm really happy with the Rockets. They're more fun to watch now as well because they got a better defense going on. But I mean, yeah, that's the key. Yeah. That's the main. That's the key. Yeah. Yes. Well. But talking about it, just quickly to the other um, Texas team or one of the other Texas teams, San Antonio. I mean, Kawhi is still out. I heard Tony Parker is going to go play in the G League for rehab. Yeah, um, I read it yeah. today. So I hope he gets better soon because I like watching him play. But Kawhi, do you see tape last week of him like trying to get up into the team plane? Like he was hobbling. That yeah, was that was bad. That was yeah, not I didn't see that. At all. That's awful. He that was, was quite walking. far off. Yeah, yeah. he looked quite oh, far off. He was walking very gingerly, let's say that. Yeah. And yeah. he looked like when you just got injured. Like, yeah. He looked like he was walking off the court after rolling his ankle. Like it looked that bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how yeah. many weeks he will be out? It's, it's, they don't have a timetable. They're oh. not saying. Like, okay, because uh, I, I didn't didn't hear like a month that he's will be out like for months, months or something. Like, it could be, it could be until Christmas. Who knows? Yeah, like, yeah. I foresee, I foresee that it will be a while yeah. because yeah. not only because of that footage, which yeah. was not looking very good, but also because I think they will err on the side of yeah. caution. Of course, that's that's just what I was waiting to say. They will yeah. take extra. Yeah. Time. Like, even when he's good to go, they'll still give it another two months. Yeah, there's not going to be a yeah. issue in Kawhi of like, oh, he needs time to settle in. No, no, he's one of the best players in the league. He's super humble. He knows his role. He's not going to come in and just change everything. No one's going to be pissed when he's back, like giving up shots. He's gonna, he can come back in March at yeah. 100% and it'll be like, right, well, let's, let's go have a run in the season for playoffs. Yeah. Um, Early exactly. days yet, yeah, but it Early looks days. like that pep talk that Aldridge had with Pop has done something as well. He That's does funny. look. Markedly better than last year. Yeah. As I said, it's early days yet, but you know, <laughs> I'll a little that. bit better. Like looks, no, like, Paul, exactly. looks like Portland Aldridge again. Like, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, as well. Like, there's no rush getting Kawhi back because it's not like they're worrying about are they going to make the playoffs. It's they're three and zero. Like, yeah, like, and they played legitimate good teams and like struggled to come back like, and won dirty, and they look good doing it. And the Jonte Murray's looks great. Kawhi oh, looks uh, LA looks good. Yeah. Um, even Powell, even if he's not mobile enough, but he's still getting buckets. Yeah, um, Nobly looks great. Like they've got all the pieces and right now. Yeah, I see as well. Like San Antonio, San Antonio looks good, and even without Kawhi, so yeah, and that's like ninety percent of the credit goes to Popovich. I think you can oh. see every time he's preparing his team so well and. Because when we look at his, his roster, like just the unique players, there's nothing special right now without yeah. Kauri. There's nothing special, but they are obviously three, four games in, but they won and they won easily, more or less. Yeah. And I don't see that changing. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's the work of the coach. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Popovich is always going to be, like, he's either yeah. going to win coach of the year, he's going to be second or third place votes, like every yeah. year. Um, and I don't know what kind of pact with the devil he made 20 years ago to keep, like for this to happen every fucking year. Yeah. But they're gonna win 50 games, and it's not. Yeah. It's it's easy. Like they're gonna win 55 games. Like. Um, I would love to but, but, just one one day uh, like uh, training for him or something. Like, uh, just, that's just amazing. To, uh, want to know what, what he's doing, what he's telling to uh, to his players yeah. and everything. And, yeah. Just seeing who is acting with the players it would be yeah. great. Well, well I was saying like the behind the scenes footage from training camp, the stuff yeah. in the Spurs is always the best because he's incredible. Like, you can yeah. just see he knows the game so much better than ever. Like he didn't play, like, he wasn't a, a, never a pro. 
Like yeah. he came, like, I think he like he did coaching in the army or the or the air force in the states. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he's he seems like a great dude. Everyone's got nothing but praise for him. And yeah, I'd yeah. love to like learn anything. Because, from him, but. because like obviously he's he's basketball wise, he's one of the best. But I think ever, yeah. um, especially he has to be one of the best like social skill wise because otherwise you you don't have because he 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 needs to have really good skills to read people because he brings in people from Europe and yeah. more most of the time they fit in perfectly yeah. and they produce way better than anybody uh, expected that, and like, yeah. I just wanted to learn from him like uh, as a yeah. person as a human being because like yeah. that's and yeah, everything like, I've ever read about him, he's always been very particular about like not only going on about basketball. As much as he's a basketball yeah. genius and a whiz kid, he's yeah. very particular about going out to dinner and you yeah. have to have something else to say. What book are you reading? What yeah, films have nice. you watched? Yeah. What's your take on a current political situation? He's very much an interpersonal type of person yeah. that focuses yeah. on the realm of life. And I think that's why yeah. he's such a great coach because he's not yeah. just like X's and O's 24 seven. When yeah. it comes to that, he's obviously one of the greatest, but he's able to balance that with other realms of life. And that's why yeah. he's so great. You know what I, mean? I mean, to bring it back to, to LaMarcus, I don't know if he, if Marcus goes to a, a different coach. Like, I don't know if Marcus Aldridge has that same conversation he had with Popovich. If he was on another team, like uh, in, if he was in, would he go have that conversation with Scott Brooks? Would he have that? Con- would he have had that conversation with Earl Watson if he ever signed with with the Suns a few years ago? No, it seems like that's all sort of conversation where you can honestly go talk to your coach and say, "I'm not happy. One minute, can we sort this out?" Yeah, but it doesn't seem like that happens with many other people other than Popovich, right? And he understands and goes, "Oh shit, well, yeah, let's figure this out and like be grown yeah. men about this." Um, yeah, but yeah, I think we all agree unanimous. Popovich is the best coach in the NBA. Yeah, um, sure. we'd all love to play play for him or <laughs> coach under him. But I mean, just to bring it back to the injuries, like one last guy I want to talk about is all that dovetails into the rookies, um, Markel Fultz. What the hell is Philadelphia? Oh, man, man. What the oh, hell is Philadelphia <laughs> thinking? Letting him play. Like, it, it, the man, me. he can't even lift his arm. Yeah. Literally, he cannot lift his arm. It's crazy. And like, it's, he's shooting arm. Yeah. The latest news is like he's it's got shoulder he, soreness. He admitted it's shoulder soreness, and he's so he got some like he got a shot like a painkiller anti-inflammatory thing in his shoulder, and he's going to sit three games at least. Yeah, but well, he's had it drained. He had drained today. No, no, they said they said um that it was like the agent misspoke. It wasn't. He wasn't actually drained. Or like, oh, okay. They, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I had the agent got that shit mixed up. Like it's the difference yeah. between having fluid taken out of you and having painkillers jabbed in. Like, yeah. Right. But, and it's only three games he's gonna miss. Three games. So, like they could extend it, but like they say he's definitely at three games. Oh, oh they need to see him. That. When they I saw him, see him like, down. Wow. They need yeah. to see him down. That's foolishness. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because I mean, look, they obviously, uh, you know, they've done that frequently. You know, they sat in yeah. for two years. They sat similar for one day. No, no, it's what you do. Out. So <laughs> it's chill. You know what I mean? Sitting That's down. What I'm saying, yeah. man, you've been sitting, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> a guy yeah, yeah. Pops and you're sitting him. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. come on, man, it's ridiculous. They're saying you can see it. Like, there's other things like Markel's game. You watch look back at that Philly tape, like maybe it's all just the shoulder. Maybe it's just he can get a shot off right and he's not confident. But he doesn't look confident at all. But and yeah. I mean at all. Like where Bill where Bill where Ben Simmons drives into the lane and looks to either score a handoff or he looks confident. Marco Fultz looks gets a foot into the paint and looks away immediately. He's got no idea what to do there. Because he's getting blocked the fuck out. Like he's getting, no, I don't want to deviate from the injuries, but I have to quickly say Ben Simmons is looking good. <laughs> yeah. Like real he's deal. shooting with both hands. He's doing floaters with both hands. He's doing everything with both hands. Like he is looking legitimately he's looking good. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, let, let's, just go, let's just talk about the rookies then. Like Simmons is <laughs> like, digress. Like, like no, let's let's talk rookies. Like yeah, Ben Simmons but... is throw, aside from the scoring and the two-handed stuff, which. There are pro players like in their tenth year who still can't make a left hand layup with contact. Like Ben exactly. Simmons is doing all that, and he's throwing pinpoint passes. Like he's throwing passes that only his guys can catch. And rebounding, vision, yo. <laughs> I mean, second fastest player like in history. Only Oscar Robertson was faster through his first triple double. Yeah, I saw this pick yeah. as well. Yeah. That's, that's great, real deal, right? That's, 
amazing. No, yeah. doesn't seem like he's worried about his injuries at all. Like he's got very no... relaxed. His demeanor on the court is like relaxed. I know yeah. what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be great. I mean, let's talk about the other rookies, mate. Who's impressed you? Laurie Markinen, don't front oh. on my guy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear no shit about my guy, Julian. <laughs> don't front. <laughs> I'm going to have a quick look and see how many rebounds he's got. <laughs> I'm just weird to say he's something. getting eight, nine rebounds. Oh, what? That's decent. Not everything has to be a double-double in your rookie year, for God's sakes. Yeah. Oh, God, there's actually quite a lot of rebounds. Fuck. Okay. And exactly. Yeah. And didn't he yeah. just speaking about record? Didn't he just break a record for threes as well? Yeah, didn't he? Like, yes. Yeah, I think so. Listen, man. First no, he is... ten, 10 made in the first three games. Yeah, listen, he is looking automatic. He's looking at one of them automatic he shooters. Can he can it's score. a problem. Right? And he's, he's, he's not just a shooter. Yeah. What yeah. His game. He's not just a shooter. No. He can put he on the ground. When he gets a bit cl- when he gets a little bit stronger. Like, there's literally one nitpick I have of his game at the moment is when he comes out on help defense, he sometimes doesn't get back early enough. That's like the that's the one nitpick that I've noticed um, for when he's doing help defense. But no, very promising, very yeah. promising. I'll May I say for him, he's not going to win rookie of the year. Um, no, no I'd, he be, won't yeah. I'd be surprised if he gets any votes, really. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we will see that in a couple of more games, like. Yeah. Three months, if, if, but I think Philip, you are happier that he's playing good, right? That's the only good thing we've got to lean on right now. <laughs> I, didn't, you know I, didn't what I, mean? want, I didn't want to say it that way. So <laughs> no, I'd say on, on Mark and then, like, he's being the best version of himself right now, and hopefully, it lasts. I like seeing rookies play well. Um, yeah. he's not going to be rookie, he's not going to help them. I don't know if he's going to help them win games. Like, it's uh, difficult. It's difficult. I mean, he doesn't have any help. There's not exactly much going on. So yeah, like like, like two, two, three or four years ago, Riggins, Valentina Charles, and everything, and they yeah. didn't did they didn't make uh, uh, the Wolves win games. Like I don't know how many wins they had. Yeah. If you are rookie, a good rookie right. or one of the best rookies, and you are in a, one of the fucked up teams, you you could make good points and good rebounds, but it's. It's worth shit because you lose every game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you think, what do you think about how Wiggins is looking right now? Till now, he's no, looking quite, quite. I thought of Yan when he hit that game winner the yeah. other night. Yeah. I thought of yeah. you, Yan. Literally, yeah, I watched I it like you. 20 times at least. I watched it and yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness. No, nice. that nice. was a good shot. And I liked some people. I think I saw some graphic afterwards. Like someone said, oh, did he call glass on that? And yeah. Carl Anthony Towns jumped in and said, no, nah, he called game. Like, yeah. Like, fair, fair. Right, yeah. At the same time, the league did say, "Yeah, oh, dad, that was definitely an, a, an illegal screen there. Like, that someone should have called it." But at the same yeah. time, uh, fuck that. I like it when refs swallow their whistle, except for the most blatant shit, and down the end. So, uh, you made the shot amazing. Like, yeah. but he looks like the perfect third guy right now. Like, yeah. Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns, and then yeah. Wiggins yeah, backing no. up. I think he, he feels more comfortable uh, yeah. uh, comfortable in that position as well. Yeah. Like he can do his stuff and everything. Nobody is watching his defensive uh, skills anymore that much because Jimmy Butler does a lot and the whole team looks way, way better on defense. They are working harder. Yeah, they work harder. Well, last night I was like, Jimmy Butler is not playing and they lose immediately. And yeah. A lot, like with, with a big difference to the Pacers. And I think that. But like it's the key for sure yeah. in the team. I mean, it's interesting because last night I was watching the tape as well. Like on the defensive end, remember last year when everyone was saying like Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins should be some of the best defenders in the league. They just yeah. have to be fired up. Yeah. Last night, yeah. someone blew an assignment and Carl Anthony Towns rinsed them out for it. It's like, like mm. I mean, that's something you would not have seen last year, even when they had them. So maybe that's Jimmy Butler rubbing off in the right way. You have to play defense together. You have yeah. to work hard all the time. And but if you fuck up, you call each other out for it. And that's it. They, they both needed a guy who, who's like, who's better than them, and who was telling them, get the shot, go for it, go for it. If, if someone else here tells us that it's not that good, has not the position, not the not the yeah. um, position to tell that, then maybe they think, okay, I'm, I'm giving here every night 20 points and 10 rebounds. Yeah. Towns, what are you telling me? Like, yeah. who are you, more or less, right? Yeah. So, 
Jimmy Butler for sure is the key player in the exactly. team. He's a good he's, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's but just um, thank you. Well, well, before we deviate oh, oh, from oh. the Minnesota Timberwolves, let's um address <laughs> one Jamal Crawford okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and Julian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you going to eat your words now? I mean, it's, it's early days. It's four games into the season. So he's averaging twelve yeah. points. He looked really good. I, you know, that one game he dropped like seventeen or twenty points. I was really happy. But like seeing that, I don't. You think weren't it's happy. Hold up. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, in the moment, I was moment, really happy. Were, you like, weren't happy. <laughs> I was euphoric at watching a great, talented offensive player score the ball, and then I was thought, oh, "Fuck, I'm gonna have to deal with this shit on the podcast." <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, twelve points a game. I, that's that's decent. I yeah, no, I'm I'm happy for him. And then last game, like, you can't get them all right. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, you know he's old, he's a ball stopper, <laughs> he's a ball stopper, <laughs> trash. But um, in all seriousness, as well, in the last game, he had nine dimes as well, which is quite good, which is the game high. Yeah. So you know that's good to see. Speaking you know, of, obviously, um, I always thought he was a good piece, but. Yeah, you know. Speaking of dimes, it's good to see. Was it? I don't know if it was the first game of the season or the second game, but Jeff Teague didn't close the game, and it wasn't because of foul trouble. Like, mm. I think Thibodeau yeah. left it. Left it. Might have just been like Tyus Jones was hot or something, but he Thibodeau went with Tyus Jones, and I want to see Teague's fourth quarter minutes for the season. Yeah, because Teague's always says one of those guys that I worry about is he's good against bad teams. And bad defenders, but can you? I mean, it's not yeah. he doesn't have playoff experience, but I, mean, I, I want to see where I that agree. goes. Like, what, what I saw from Jeff Teague was not that good, that special. But when you have Wiggins, Jimmy Butler, and uh, Cullen Hill Johnson, you <laughs> don't need a point guard that is uh, scoring 25 points. No. So I think if if they all, if the big three, so to call, um, uh, play good and normal, then you it, Jeff Teague is. Good enough for the team to yeah. to reach the playoffs to make the season a good season, and, but to the for the future maybe it's good if if, if Tom Thibodeau is building Tyus Jones because yeah. I see potential in him and he's getting more confident and I think as as well they normally the Wolves can really make like a, a two two team uh, start starting lineup like they the five first five players and rotating com completely because they have like five good players they can play good uh, good together yeah and if they do that then Ted Jones will um, get minutes with the same guys and maybe let's help him out as well than just going um, with another squad as well all the time if you, if you get what I'm saying no definitely <laughs> I to to swing it forward like speaking of uh, last year's Minnesota point guard Ricky Rubio now in Utah. Oh my playing god! Playing well, yeah. playing really Listen. well. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I wanted to say that. I was, I was so glad you just came in with that perfect timing. Yeah. I had no idea you was going to say that. But he, listen, good. Ricky Rubio is looking very serious with the Jazz. I like how he has improved, even last year. But I like how he's improved his jump shot now. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, yeah. That's now last year he started the shooting. Same thing. Yeah. Exactly. It's not. Exactly. It's not the form. It's not a form thing. It's pure confidence. You can see it. he's coming off screens that he's not afraid to shoot. He's taking mm. loads. Of, he's taking like four or five threes a game. It's, mm. it's a question of confidence. Like Marco Fultz has got none of it. He's played four games in the NBA. He hasn't taken a three. He's a start. He's a starting point guard. What's he starting? Or he's a, like he's playing enough minutes. Like that, he should have taken a three. And but, yeah, Ricky Rubio is out there. With uh, Fools, you don't know what, what's going on with the shoulder because yeah, when you it's came, busted, like. yeah, because when you came, his his shooting form uh, at the free throw line, and when you shoot like that, when you uh, try to, then you can't shoot a, a regular uh, three pointer, right? No, you can't shoot. He can't shoot at all right now. That's why but he's yeah, quite going to say it. But... Uh, Ricky is looking quite good, and I, I like to yeah. uh, see him excel there. Yeah. Um, I mean, someone else at Utah who I hope he gets minutes because they have a deep like set of guys on the wing from Rubio, Alec Burks, who's looking looking really good, um, Rodney Hood, um, Joe Ingles is going to be out on the wing a lot as well. But I really like Donovan Mitchell. Like, he's not scoring a bunch, 
He's not shooting at a super high clip, but that's the usual like rookie getting used to the speed of the game. But I test, he looks like he's up to pace. Like he Donovan looks Mitchell good. was one of my picks in the draft. Yeah. Still. Mm-hmm. One of my guys in the draft. Yeah. He looks really, really good. Um I don't know what it is. He looks like he's been playing for like four or five years. Like he's got that sort of confidence about him. Um and like, if Utah makes it to the playoffs, he'll be an important part of that. Yeah, in, in the end. Makes it deep, I mean. Like, basketball is <laughs> a lot, a lot about confidence, right? A lot mm-hmm. about uh, mind and being in the moment and don't hesitating to shoot and everything. So yeah. if he's that confident that early, it's, it's good for him. And Definitely. And for the just thinking about guys. the other like, point guards out there, and staying out west, I really like De'Aaron Fox. You've been watching King James? I've Games? seen what he's doing. Listen, he's dangerous, you know. I mean, obviously, talking about the rookie class, there's guys that are clearly better than him, even excluding Simmons, who technically was a rookie last year and whatnot. I don't see him in the running for that directly. But like I, I said, that, but like, but like I said, like I said before, in the last podcast, I definitely want to see him and I've been watching him and he's dangerous. He is real dangerous. He's got that confidence about him as well. And yeah. his speed, yes, he, he is roasting guys. Like a drive in and get into the rack. He is absolutely roasting guys. He's not scared. I like him. Yeah, he's making great reads. Like he's being guys on backdoor scre- on screens. He's being guys backdoor. Like he's playing really well. And to your point, I Simmons is the best player, best rookie right now. Yeah. And it's like he's, thing. yeah, yeah. He's but a, a rookie, a rookie. Yeah, but of the other ones, like I don't know if he's any worse than Laurie Markkinen. I don't think he's any worse than Donovan Mitchell or he's better than Foltz. Um, Darren Fox could be hypothetically the best point guard in this draft. Because I mean, the other guy we haven't, I mean, the other haven't talked about Jason Tatum, but he looks great. But he's in the right system, right? Darren Fox, if he was playing for Brad Stevens, might also look even better than he does playing for who's the coach for the Kings? Isn't it, uh, yo, no, yeah. isn't it? Yo, 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 what's his name? Um, the former Grizzlies coach before my man. Oh, before of course, Dave Yoga. Oh, Dave Yoga. Yeah. Dave, Dave Yoga. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying, De'Aaron Fox, I think, is at least as good as Tatum right now. I think I've got on my list, and I think I had a list there going like Simmons, Mitchell, De'Aaron Fox, Jason Tatum, and Laurie Markman. I thought, shit, that's actually a pretty good starting five. (laughs) 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 Um, And also, I was watching something um, funny from from the Ringer, like Bill Simmons' podcast, and from his big book, like the Book of Basketball, got on my shelf here. There's a thing. Remember, like, there's a story about the Monte Carlo game. When in in 1992, where the, before the Olympics, the American team went to Monte Carlo for an exhibition game and for training. Yes, and there's, yes, like a, yes. There's like a closed door training session where they just like went at it, no cameras, no media, yeah. no nothing. And people and they were Bill Simmons was saying, the Aaron Fox passes the Monte Carlo test. Like you'd want him on that in that game. Like yeah. you'd want him to be your point guard. And yeah. I mean, I'm really excited about. I think he's really good, even with a team like the Kings who aren't as much of a laughing stock anymore as they were a few years ago. So and have a good got a good coach. Um ownership that's prepared to spend money. Um I mean the other point guard, I mean, I'm saying Darren Fox could be the best point guard of the draft and it depends what you think about Lonzo Ball. Oh uh, yeah, we haven't talked about him like <laughs> like two or three games and the first game he's destro- he's getting destroyed more or less. Yeah. Next game he is destroying. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's one first you're playing against Patrick Beverly. And the thing yeah. is, he did get destroyed, but yeah, he was they, making good reads. He was like, he didn't look, it wasn't like yeah. he was completely lost. No, no, and then no, the second no, game, he gets the sun. Just, so, just, like, who, who fucking knows? Yeah. Like, it's like, <laughs> I just wanted to. John Wall's looking to take his head off tonight. <laughs> though, <right>? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's believe that. It's going to be a yeah. boxing match. But, <laughs> uh, the Wall star, John, John Wall is. Easily one of the most underrated players in the league. I've, I mean, I, I like so to judge players like, league. would I take them in NBA 2K? It's like, yeah, yeah, I'd happily start a team with John Wall. Absolutely, I would. Like, you know, I mean, 100% agree with you. John Wall is an amazing player. Yeah. yeah. Starting... Where's Kevin? Where's Kevin? He, he would love to hear that. Yeah. 
is John Wall. John Wall's problem. Well, I say I was going to say he's going to start point guard for the East. So it's not going to be a fucking East and West. So like, John Wall has to be picked by someone. Like LeBron is, has got to pick John Wall to be on his team, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to see how that whole thing pans out as well. Because you can't just fun. have. Like, if it's Steph, I, listen, I don't just want to see, like, four or five Warriors. That, no, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. whack. Yeah. There's going to have to be something that's regulated. You I, can't I just want, pick your boys. I said, what I the want, hell? Did you watch the decision in 2010? No, I want that. I want that. I want, basically, the decision meets the actual NBA draft. Like, they all, they're all there in their hats, and they go up and shake LeBron James' hand or Steph Curry's hand when they get drafted. <laughs> I want a whole shebang. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to happen like that, no way. Like, what was it going to be like? They get together wherever the like find the nearest casino, all hang out and just say, "Oh, I'll take him, him, and him," <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, we're not going to see that. As much as it would make fantastic viewing, we're not going to see that process. We're going to yeah. see once it's done. We're not going to see guys standing there and actually choosing guys and yeah. other guys standing there. Like, yeah, like, line up tall guys that and short guys that. But that's crazy. The guy you don't get picked at the end just standing there. Well, looking at like, his face. You have to have a camera on Damien Lillard for the entire thing, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Dame Dollar cam, yeah. Uh, oh, I man. mean, say everything. I love Dame Dollar's game. Um, he's also the best rapper in the NBA by far and away. If you haven't listened okay. to his new album, really? confirmed. Like, I haven't, but it's good. It's good. It's, it's really good. Like, yeah. He's the he's, yeah he's he's the best rapper in the NBA. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's for right. sure. But it, it, it's good to listen to if it's it's actually a legit good album. Like yeah, <laughs> it's okay. standalone a, a legit good album. But, okay. No, no, he's yeah. no, he's proper. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, yeah I, I, that's I, I, not I just, oh, I'm a baller and let me go and have no, some no, no, fun no, no, and just I, mess I, around I with the mic. I mean, no, 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 no that's that's stuff. Stuff. It's good. It's good. Yeah, but if it's like that good, like like the best of the best in hip hop, that that normally is not that the case, right? Because he's playing basketball. I don't know. I don't know about all that, but it's, I don't. Know. It's 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 good. I mean, I, it's a really well produced album. Just to deviate real quick, I mm-hmm. forty minutes of it, I can listen to it beginning to end. There's not a track I would skip. Okay, that's, it's really well produced. It's really well. well. Okay. Okay. Little okay. Wayne's on it. Like, it's, I, I, okay. no. it's better than the first album as well. But okay, okay. Um, <laughs> glowing um, <laughs> reference point for me that Lil Wayne's on it, but yeah, <laughs> I hear you though. Yeah. Put it this okay. way, if we never knew anything about Damian Lillard playing basketball and we only knew him as a rapper, he yeah. would still stand up as a quality artist. That's how good yeah. he is. 100%. That's a fact. Yeah. No, I uh, really like that album. I rec- confirmed I'd recommend everyone go get it. Actually buy it as well. That'd be great. He doesn't need the money, but you know. Um, <laughs> Oh, that shoot! No, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Now I'm gonna check it out. I will, it's, I on, will it's on YouTube, like, so yeah, nice. it's, it's on Spotify as well, right? Yeah. Give uh, it a preview and that. Yeah, then yeah. next, uh, next. Plus, it might be that good version of Little Wayne that pops up every now and then. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good track to jump on. Like, I want to talk about some pleasant surprises and stuff. Like, Yanis is the obvious one, though, isn't he amazing? But, yeah, and I'm not idea. a big fan of, I, I'm a huge fan of Yanis, but the other guy I want to mention who I've never been a huge fan of at all. Um, hey, in fact, like, uh, what not Jamal Crawford. Like, <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it's the point where I used to criticize this game so much that when I was at university and I was coaching a team that my guys bought me when I was, when I was leaving uni, they got me his jersey as like a, a <laughs> fuck you, thank you. And it was Blake Griffin. I, I <laughs> never like Blake, like, but he is looking. He's looking very like, good. He's going to steal some energy. In the name of the father <laughs> and of the <laughs> son <laughs> and of the holy Blake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. so he's, I mean, the Clippers are 3-0. I mean, they beat the Jazz, the Lakers and the Suns, whatever. But they beat the Jazz well. Mm-hmm. Blake has got 27-9-4. and four. He's shooting 50% from the field, 44% from deep on, like, regular shots. He's taking yeah. six shots a game from deep. And 82% on free throws. And like those assists, like four and a bit assists, those aren't just like on the post, kick out, or like lucky fast break and yeah. stuff. These yeah. are legitimate throwing difficult passes, running the fast break assists. He's and, staying really good. Man. Yeah. That's the thing, though, you see. You know, aside from <laughs> as Phil was just referring to, <laughs> when Rudy got absolutely <laughs> obliterated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and baptized and everything. Aside from that, 
the whole Blake Griffin thing, this is what me and Phil would talk about. That's kind of where this weird media blindness thing actually yeah. begun. And we used to have so many conversations about that with Blake Griffin. Obviously, he came into the league. He was a super high flyer. So guys were just like, oh, he dunks. That's it. Yeah. And they didn't really look past his, you know, past his dunking ability. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so they didn't really take any notice of his development like two, three years into it. Talk about he hasn't got a jump shot, whatnot. But as you can see, he does have an array of things that he can do on the court. And now yeah, that... And he's right. He's been in that position. And CP3 now not being there is allowing yeah. him to showcase that a lot more. Yeah. Obviously, he's ball handling skills. And, you know, he was playing, not at the Clippers, but he was playing point guard at one time. Yeah. You know, I remember we've seen young. a preview of this. When CP3 was out for that long period of time, Blake held it down and they were getting wins. Yeah. So we've Real. seen this before. Because I remember... Real. Was the CP3 was out and then Blake was out and Blake more than held it down and was leading that team, like and it weren't no empty numbers. They were getting wins. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like so, yeah, it's, it's so exciting to see because my main gripe with them years ago, it wasn't that he was just a dunker who couldn't shoot. Like a load of guys like that athletic coming into the league are just dunkers and can't shoot. That's no surprise. But his yeah. post game was dog shit. Like he had yeah. this thing where. He would, he would face away from the basket, doing his post move. He would jump first and then try and spin in the air to do his hook shot. Like, yeah. It was messed up. It's fixed. It seems so much better this year. Like, <laughs> and they're running everything through him. Like he's in the mid post or the low post, or he's running pick and roll with DeAndre. And I don't think there are that many fours that can... Four, like If you set a four or five pick and roll, I don't think many people can keep up with DeAndre and Blake. Yeah. And when it's not him, it's Lou Williams, or occasionally Austin Rivers. Like, or Patrick Beverly. So. Yeah. And I, I really like Teo Dosic as well. Like, I think we all know that Teo Dosic looks like a lot of fun. Like, the kind of guy you definitely want to play with. I mean, uh, of the other MVPs that we talked about on the podcast, like, last week, um, LeBron looks great. Like, whatever. Obviously, yeah. he does. Um, Kawhi isn't playing, so we can't judge that. I mean, Harden looks great if they look sneakily better than... Um, but they look... Not that much far off the Warriors. Maybe he he can get some votes. Maybe he is MVP. But Giannis, <laughs> like, we can't what find happened? Words. Yeah, we can't. What? Uh, well, what happened? I was thinking that he will be will developing him. Did he? Did he? I, I mean, did he make a massive leap forward this summer? Or is he just bigger? It was like, it's not like yeah, he's, like, he got physically. He got way better than last year. Like, he, yeah. like but. I, I I think like that he will be like three four five games like that maybe in a row again or something. But then I think I assume that he will be <laughs> will get a bit more chill. <laughs> no, 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 well, maybe that's the thing. He's not right now. He's averaging thirty seven eleven and five, yeah, two he, steals out of block. Yeah. Yeah, if he, and he's shooting sixty six percent from the field because and he not, can make jump shots. Yeah, he's made two <laughs> jump shots. Giannis but, has improved physically. Um, yeah. with his body and his conditioning and he's improved with his overall game but the number one thing that he's improved is his mentality yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's the challenge that Kobe set about going for MVP uh, or wherever but you can see in his demeanour on the court the way he's playing the expressions, the aggression mm -hmm. this is a new Giannis yeah. everything he else is obviously there He's worked on his game. He's been in the gym, whatever, whatever. But it's this that I see with Giannis. Yeah, yeah. His I mind is like switched like, on, like on a different level. Yeah, That's yeah what, what you said about like, other players, like NBA, like he's <laughs> playing with confidence. Like yeah. he goes on the court and knows, like I'm probably if I'm not playing LeBron James, I'm probably the best player on the court right now. Yeah, and you oh, yeah. see that. Yeah, and he, he's that. accepting. I think he's accepting as well, like that he's more or less the Westbrook type of guy right now for uh, yeah. for the Bucks. that if he does not everything, they will lose. And yeah. Then he does everything and they win. <laughs> so yeah. and then he goes with all the confidence like you would drive and it looks it, it looks amazing. It's, and it's, it's, I don't know who, who will who can stop him if he plays no. like well, it's the thing who? he sh he can't make jump shots. And yeah. every team knows this. 
and it doesn't matter at yeah. all. Like yeah. he gets a foot in the paint, he can get a shot up around you, sort of up and around you. Like, yeah. oh, he's just going to dunk on you, and like it's utterly ridiculous. You, you, have, you, you look really afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's not Greek freak anymore. He's like an angry Greek god staring <laughs> down from Olympus, just flicking other basketball players <laughs> off the court. Like it's yeah. just nah, I'm done with this. Like. Mm. It, if they get third or they could be the third best team league. Um and he's still young. If he develops a jump shot yeah. and even like a even like a 36 percent from from three and a Ooh. decent jump shot, it is a wrap. Yeah. 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 He needs to shoot like 30%. 30% is like the minimum to make it worthwhile to shoot three point shots over trying to get twos, like just statistically speaking. Mm-hmm. And if he gets near that, there's uh, the game's over for him. No, you can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Like, no, I can't think of a player like him. I think ever. We, like, we, we can see now uh, the new LeBron because obviously LeBron is dominating since he's in the league, more or less, yeah. as a unique player, as one player and the, uh, the individual. And I don't see anyone else who can do that <laughs> except from Giannis in the next yeah. years. Yeah. No. I mean, it's... Yeah. it's if he is there, the fourth or third seed, he gets the MVP. Yeah. Teams are going to do everything in their power to stop him perfecting any kind of jump shot. Yeah. Like, seriously, they need mm. to, like, something needs to happen because if he does, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, yeah. That's too scary. There's nothing yeah. you can do with him. There's yeah. absolutely nothing you can do with him because, because he... you're going to be too scared. Like, what, what can you do? <laughs> And he handles the ball really well as well. Do you remember season before last when they experimented with, with him at the point? Yeah. He does handle the ball really well as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't have scary. like he doesn't have like point guard handles. It's not like he's a guy who played no, guard growing up and like. But <laughs> you know, like there are guys out there who played point guard growing up and then suddenly grew really tall and they just are now a big guy with point guard like handles. Like Pau Gasol was like that. He played guard growing up and then just happened to be seven foot tall. Like, yeah. But Giannis is he still learning well. that, and he knows he's still learning that. Like he's not he, he's not out there going, "I'm the best player in the league." Like he knows like, I need to improve my jump shot. I need to be a better defender. I need to be a off ball de- uh, off ball defender. I need to find my handle, and uh, you can tell with him he's not going to be happy winning MVP. Like, it's yeah. not going to matter. And um, like that team needs to go to the conference finals for him to be happy. Yeah, and, and now with Gordon Hayward out, like I don't. It's not that everything has to work out good for for, for the Bucks and as well, and um, everything is a bit wor- uh, bad for, for the Celtics, but yeah. it's n- nothing that is so 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 um, impossible no. to happen, right? And they have a good core. They have a really good core, and yeah. they've got little pieces. Like I mean, earlier on we were talking about Bledsoe. I mean, I don't think they should trade for him, but people were talking about. It. Oh, Bledsoe can go to the Bucks. You give him Malcolm Brogdon and Greg, Greg Monroe, like that's a deal that could happen. The money works out. Like, but I don't like yeah. Bledsoe on that team, but uh, or Monroe and Brogdon on the other team. But the fact that it, that is a possibility means that the Bucks have assets to make a move if they want to, and it's not like they're wedded to Greg Monroe. They've been trying to trade him for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so there is room for them to get still better. And they'll need to if they want to keep Giannis around long term, right? I mean, yeah. He seems sure. like a pretty loyal dude, but like he's not going to hang around for a team that's not going to be competing every year. Yeah. And the thing is, next year when LeBron leaves and goes west, suddenly it is like is Giannis just the best player in the East now? Oh, the oh sorry, I didn't realize LeBron LeBron called you and let you know some stuff, yeah. I mean, he's definitely going to LA, right? It's it's the worst kept secret in the NBA. <laughs> oh, see, okay. I didn't get that memo. I can't Me neither. Who, who doesn't want to get like he's going to shake hands with Matthew Johnson and then like he'll say, "All right, I'll do this for like five more years, then I'll retire." Like, if I if I was LeBron, I would not actually do that. I'm not saying that's not going to happen or possible. I don't. Something tells me it's not going to happen, yeah. but I wouldn't do that if I was LeBron at this point. I just think there's a strong possibility, but I'm not as sold on the foregone conclusion as most people are. Like, yeah. Julian, you're not the only one. Like, literally yeah. everybody on ESPN is just like, it's a guarantee he's going to LA. And yeah. there's a strong possibility and there's a good case and many reasons and I, I understand and know them well 
but I'm just not there. Like, it's definitely happening, like most people seem yeah. to be. Yeah. I think I a lot depends on... A lot of that depends on this year, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they win the chip, then fine. But, you know, he signs another two-year deal, like one-year deal with a player option. And then he... I think as well, in my opinion, or like I, I see... Um, LeBron, he, he wants to be remembered as the best player ever played the game and that he needs to win more championships and I don't know if he goes like after that season to LA Lakers if he is not losing one or two rings, mm-hmm. possible rings when he chooses for other team or stays with the Cavs so. yeah. well, he's, he's not going to get to six right I I I put money on LeBron. No, he's not going to end up at the end of his career with six championships, mm. unless he ends up signing with the Warriors. It's not happening. So, signing with the Warriors. I'd cancel, my, like, I'd cancel so, my league pass. I'd cancel yeah. my league pass if he's like, yeah. Uh, just to say, LeBron signs for veterans minimum to play with Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, no. and Andre Iguodala, yeah. and Clay Thompson. Right. Cancel my league pass immediately. Uh, done. I'm going to be an NFL fan. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about the Cavs real quick. Um, their defense sucks. Mm-hmm. It sucked last year, and it sucked in the playoffs last year. But it's it's so bad. It's really disheartening to watch. Like, even against the Bulls, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, like, yeah, listen, we nearly had them, mate. They're lucky <laughs> with our short sell with with Miritich's broken face and Portis's suspension, and Zach still not even back yet and a bunch of rookies and second-year players and a terrible coach. We nearly had them. <laughs> Bearing in mind, we've beat them, like, was it eight out of the past nine times in recent seasons and beat them in preseason? Yeah. We nearly had them, as terrible as we are. Yeah. So I 100% agree with you. The defense is terrible. I mean, it's, it, you look down the line, like, okay, LeBron James is probably the best basketball player that's ever walked the earth. Like, uh, who knows what Yanis does in, in the length of his career. He's 22. But LeBron is either the... LeBron is top three all time, right? At at top five at least. Yeah. And he's the he's the best point guard on the team, best shooting guard, small forward, power forward, best center, best six man, best coach, probably the best GM in Cleveland as well. And but after that, Carl Corver got crossed up by K Felder so hard that he fell on his ass. Like, <laughs> Kevin Love can't still can't guard people. JL Smith has never been a lockdown defender. The the weight is too old. IT is the worst defender at his position when he comes back. D Rose has never been that guy. Like, can Cleveland guard? I mean, they haven't played one of the better teams in the East yet. I mean, I'd be really eager to see what happens when they face up, even a team like Toronto. What happens when they play the Wizards like, with yeah. really great perimeter players and like, a well organized offense? Because I'm, I'd be worried if I was the Cavs. Like, looking at it now, I do not think it's as an easier run to. Even with Gordon going, Hayward going down, it's not an easy run to the finals. Like I'm less confident in them now than I was two weeks ago. But like a lot less confident. Mm. Talking about uh, good teams or predicted good teams, Warriors lost already. Like two yeah, games, isn't it? Yeah. They'll, they'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but, but but to me, it's a surprise that they already lost like two games. That's the thing, they're not going to break the record if they keep on doing it this way. But... Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Because... yeah, and Steph, we didn't even talk about that, but well, generally, they, they've got this little tantrum flow going on. Yeah. This whole tantrum. Because they've been, winning so, they've been winning so many games over the past few seasons. That's like a loss to them. It's like, like you said, it's a, it's a tantrum thing. It's like it's yeah. the typical, like, throw your, what's it, dummy out the pram type of thing. Yeah. when things don't go their way because they're so unused to yeah. things yeah. not going their way. And like I said before, I said this on this podcast before as well, they're still the most dominant team in the league, but they're not going to have this easy road that they've been having the past couple of years. Yeah. Like, so, there are teams that are able to at least challenge them and make them think about it a lot more than they have had to in the past three years. Yeah. I mean, aside That's from that, aside from there being better teams in general in the West, everyone is going to be up to play. And like, I think you said this as well before, Phil, like, people are coming out the neck every game. No one wants to make it easy for the work for the champion. Yeah, and right. they, everyone had a reduced training camp. So people are still figuring stuff out. But I mean the Warriors that shouldn't have effect like I, I read today that Nick Stones is saying like we have no idea what our offense is. Like we don't know any of the sets. We know nothing at all. Like mm-hmm. the Warriors ha- have had or had as little time in training camp as the Knicks. But they don't have the same excuse because they've been playing together for a year. Like, yeah. like 
we're basically the same team, right? So, I mean, it's, it's they're not used to losing when it happens. Like, they don't know how to react. Death throwing is. And I think, oh, exactly. And I think on top of the blood, sweat, and tears that we referred to on what well, must have been last last week's podcast or the one before, and what Phil was talking about people coming at their necks. On top of that, I think generally their attitude, which you're starting to see again, because this is nothing new, you're starting to see it seep out very early. That is what is going to be the potential source of their undoing, if there is an undoing. Yes. Because for the past couple of years now, listen. Correct. Yeah, listen. I liked the Golden State Warriors at one point. Yeah, I, especially mm. like the Mark Jackson era, right up to when they got rid of him. And mm. it, even the initial curse stages and whatnot, they were a team I always liked a lot. Yeah. But you saw, even prior to the KD thing, that just took it to a whole new mm. level. <laughs> mm. but you when saw, Draymond signed his $82.5 million deal, that's listen, when his attitude started to get stink. And yes. that's when they started to change. Listen, they yeah. literally. The day Draymond signed his $82.5 million <laughs> deal, he became a bastard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree. I Literally. Agree. Yeah. No, Clay, real. remember, Clay started running his mouth. Clay, yeah. you never used to run your mouth. All of a sudden, you're running your mouth. Hold on a minute. You just a humble guy in the corner banging freeze. Do that. Don't run yeah. your mouth. <laughs> Clay started running his mouth. No, nah, mate. Then that's when they, you just started to like dislike them. Yeah, Just be humble, be good, and win games. Don't <laughs> run your mouth. If you if you, if it's a, if, if your players that you always were that you always wore the bully boys, you always wore that kind of like run your mouth. That, fair enough, but you weren't like that before. Now all of a sudden you're running your mouth. Move, man. No, I completely agree. I mean, if this team, if the, the Warriors lose, it's going to be their own fault because they got complacent or they didn't know how to handle a little bit of like, a little bit of failure or they couldn't deal with the refs giving them like not giving them a call. I mean, it already cost Steph Curry fifty grand. So, like, yeah. like, fuck's sake, give me some. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's real. They never should have gave Draymond money. I'm telling you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never should have gave Draymond money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, they just switched up the whole team, the whole vibe. I don't like it. Very yeah, I mean, it's spoiled, just... arrogant. There's a there's yeah. certain air about them, even down yeah. to Steve Kerr referring to Steph Curry and what punishment he may get, the way he was just so sarcastic about it. I don't know if you mm. saw that was uh, Yeah, exactly. You're just yeah. like, nah, man, come on. You, you know what I mean? Like you said, be humble. Sit down. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, hold it down a bit. I'm, I'm not loving that. And that's why you have people waiting in the wings. <laughs> people like Philip <laughs> waiting yeah. in the wings, rubbing their hands for when they get clapped. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. but, but I think like the Everybody who is no no Golden State Warriors fan is now in that position because I'm, I'm like yeah because they're the type of team yeah. where every night no matter who they're playing they could be playing flipping the Nets you're just rooting for whoever they're playing yeah. you just want them to lose <laughs> and that wasn't the, that wasn't the case when before they started running them out yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree I like them like I had the same exact same journey uh, with the Warriors as uh, Aaron because. Of like them and they were cool players and everything but then they started to win then they started to earn money and then they are like running their mouths all the time and if you think they they are the best of the best of the history of the of humankind or i don't know what's going on (laughs) (laughs) man said the best in the history of humankind No, but it's true though. So there's just it's a whole true. different level of arrogance. Like, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not as anti warrior as you guys. Like it seems like I at the same time, yeah, I, I am always yeah. I'm never rooting for them unless it's like well, I'm not gonna root for the fucking sons. Like so no, I I'm not I'm not rooting against them or something. I, I just I'm rooting against their, their arrogance and other things. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. I, I, I like the players. I'm still a student like, of like the, the game, so like ultimately that wins for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's cool everything, but but the, but I don't, I hate arrogant people and everything. And 
Draymond Green and all, all that they uh, did uh, in the last uh, month and everything. It's like, come on. And like, <laughs> be humble, sit down, like Aaron said. Yeah. yeah. It's the attitude. Yeah, yeah, it's not them. I'm a student of the game. I love great basketball. I love their yeah. style. Like, yeah. you know, that will always yeah. trump anything else. But like you correctly said, it's just that unnecessary arrogance. And even arrogance, I can understand when it's organic, when it's naturally you, when you've always yeah. been like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Braggadocious. Okay, cool. That's you, innit? Yeah. But you weren't that before. Exactly. Yeah. So like, that's why I'm saying. Put a battery yeah. in your before. back and then you start getting hyped all of a sudden. It's just like, yeah. come on, man. Was there anything yeah. else on the agenda, Julian? No, nah, mate, I think we, we ran through everything that like sort of happened the last week, all the catching up on MVPs and rookies. Like uh, we can't do rookies every week, but like But you would like to, right? <laughs> I like rookies. No, no, they're fun to watch. Um for sure, yeah. I don't know what happened to Bam Adebayo. like he hasn't doing anything for Miami. Like we talked about the Bulls, we talked about the Timberwolves, we talked about my team. Uh, Miami two and one. Uh Justice Winslow doesn't look shook. Something's wrong with Justice Winslow. Don't know what it is, but he doesn't look right. That he was brilliant in the playoffs a couple of years ago. Something looks off with him. I can't decide what it is. But they're two and one. They'll be a low, they could be six seed if they're lucky. Um, yeah. Eric Spolster was said today um, Whiteside is the best center in the NBA. I was like, oh, you have to say that, don't you? Yeah, Whiteside's yeah, yeah. the kind of guy who's going to look up. Like, Whiteside's going to be the kind of guy who has Google alerts for when like, someone quotes it, like, talks about him. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I don't like why I still trade him. Like, his value's never going to be higher, trade him. Uh, quickly talking about that, I think the whole Joel Embiid getting at cats is quite funny as well. I love it. I like that. Love it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's kind of a similar example. Even when he wasn't playing, he's been like that. Yeah. Even throughout his injury, he's been like that. His rookie season, he's been, he's always been how he is. Before, whatever, after, that's organic. So that doesn't irk me at all. And like, he's not chatting shit either. Like he's calling out Whiteside for this and that. It's like, yeah, it's like because you guys won and they lost, so, so that's fine. It's not like you're chatting shit about. Uh, and he did, he, he did actually barbecue chicken on Jay Drummond <laughs> as well. Like his <laughs> it was, it was barbecue chicken. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trust me. Uh, yeah, Joel Embiid looks great. Bill Simmons looks fucking amazing. Hope and hope Markel Fultz gets better. Darius Saric looks like the good, like third or fourth best player on that team, exactly what he needs to be. Um, I pref- the thing is, right now, I prefer watching Philadelphia to. I mean, I, I mean, part of it's time zones, but I'd rather, given the choice, I'd rather watch a Philadelphia game right now than a Warriors game. Yeah, right. because you know, you know what what you will have for the Warriors or yeah, Warriors, exactly. but yeah. it's new with uh, Philadelphia, and it's like, like right now with Simmons and. Like the start, they could be in uh, three to four years. The Warriors, uh, the new mm-hmm. Warriors. So but, like, well, the, the Warriors are so young. So, yeah. But you get what I'm saying. I'm happy for Brett Brown because Brett Brown's yeah. actually a really good coach. Yes, he it's is. just because of the whole situation and the Sam Tanky situation and the process and all of that, why they've had to suffer. But Brett Brown is actually a really good coach. So I'm happy for him. Man, trust the process. Like, it's worked out. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's, it's going to be the last time a team can do it as well. Like, so, because the change to the draft, like no one else can be able to do it ever again. So, yeah, yeah, this is the last year. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're going for it. Yeah, that's why you and the Suns are fighting. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's the last year, mate. <laughs> yeah. So after this, I mean, I don't give a crap about college players until the until the tournament, and I don't really get up on like who's going to get drafted where um, until the summer comes around. But that, that, I mean, for, like, for that we have Kevin normally because he knows yeah. every every little thirteen year old <laughs> <laughs> ever played. Yeah, five star recruit for Eno, you know. <laughs> Kevin yeah, knows the number one pick in the year twenty twenty five. Yeah, well, no, number one pick in twenty twenty five is LeBron's son, right? That's what oh. I, I was hearing something about that. Yeah. I don't know, like who knows. Who knows? But yeah, other team like the Bulls playing for the number one draft pick, um, but still like taking it to Cleveland without, like he said, like Chris Dunn wasn't playing. Like Zach Levine is out. Um, Porter's no Porter's no Miritic. You got Zipser being maybe, like second best maybe player. Maybe they aren't even t- too good. Like, That's too good. Absolutely. Yeah. Laurie Markley just gets punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great first week. 
aside from the injuries. For sure, yeah. yeah. That's more or less it. Let's um, wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. And get to these games in a couple of hours. I've got a few things to do before that. Yeah. So I will bid you guys a good night. Yeah. Have a good week. You, Next week. Yeah. Easy. Stay classy. Yeah. 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 Now. Adios. Take it easy. Basketball breaks. Make sure you check it out. Google Bricks. Basketballbreaks.com. Keep it locked. Google Bricks. For people who like uh, love basketball, basketball breaks.